Well, sure it's quiet in here today. Yes, a little too quiet, if you know what I mean. Hmm, I'm afraid I don't. You see, bees usually make a lot of noise. No noise! Suggests no bees. Oh, I understand now. Oh, look, there goes one. To the Beemobile! You mean your Chevy? Yes. Well, very clever, Simpson. Luring our bees to your sugar pile and then selling them back to us at an inflated price. Bees are on the what now? Simpson, you diabolical. We're willing to pay you $2,000 for the swarm. Deal! Oh, wait a minute. The bees are leaving. No! My sugar is melting! Melting! Oh, the world! The Ken's laser. Welcome to another episode of Occam's Laser, the only podcast in the world hosted by me and Dulta. <laughs> and today we are joined by a very special guest, a beekeeper, Joe Bonfield. Am I special? Hello, Joe. So- <laughs> <laughs> also, hello. Yeah, also, hello. hello. <laughs> so, bees. Um, you're not a professional beekeeper, but you keep no. them. Bees are mad interesting and they're in the news loads for the last few years because they are dying and then everyone got concerned about them uh, so much so that a very close friend of mine carries around a little um, sugar water. Little bee survival kit. Yeah, sugar water and it gives it to bees when you see them on the road or whatever. Just to feed them when they get tired. Yeah. And, yeah. So I many people really care about them these days. Yeah, I was actually... I. I had a car bonnet lifted up recently and it's full of little holes and then a honeybee came along and he kept trying to go into all the little holes in the metal but I was like none of those are flowers there's a bee in the bonnet yes <laughs> literally <laughs> but uh, I felt bad because he was wasting energy and I was like no bee don't waste your time there's no sugar here just a corrosive battery <laughs> sugar water it must be an American bee after all those oil oil in the car <laughs> alright so so can you tell us anything about the how do you keep bees? Like what do you have to do? It's like simplest way to explain is you literally just have a box with a hole and the bees come in and live and they go out <laughs> when they want to they forage. And it's like you've got hives and village yards just wooden or polystyrene boxes and there's various different levels you can add on levels onto it. The bottommost one would be where they live, where they where they lay their eggs, where they rear their brood, and they keep their own stores. And then you have um, a little grid that excludes the queen from getting up to the upper levels, so mm. they just fill that full of stores of honey. That's what you harvest. And how many hives do you actually have? Like, if it's just a hobbyist thing, like, how many would it be? We have normal? two at the moment. Okay. One kind of died back a bit over the winter, so we're going to put that into a smaller hive into a nucleus hive just to try and give it time to build itself back up we might merge that with one of the other ones that we have because the queen and that one may be failing so so do you just get rid of the queen yeah so just if the queen fails then either they'll try and supersede her themselves okay but if it's the case they can't do it then the hive might just die out so what we probably do is take the queen and dispatch her and merge this hive with another hive so that you've got a stronger stock of bees. Yeah. Your foreign policy, you're like interfering in their uh, <coughs> their own government. It's like American it's not government. Really government. It's like Assassination. It's not really yeah. government. They're, they're more... It's a monarchy. More, they're more one organism. <laughs> the colony is an organism rather than the individual bees. So you can just... A so hive mind. Yeah. But even yeah. when you're talking about them, you're saying like the colony is if it's like... Do you see it as one thing and more intelligent than any stupid bee? Well, it's because it's all controlled centrally by the queen and then there's yeah. various other pheromones and ticks that keep them going. So it really is one organism. Do you not think you each that? bee deserves the right to vote? <laughs> they probably they probably do deserve it but it's a matriarchy and they don't care. they do what mammy says the whole time did you ever watch Malcolm in the Middle uh, yes. when Malcolm meets a guy who's way smarter than him and then he explains how smart he is to Malcolm by saying imagine a beehive uh, and my brain is like a beehive and every bee in that hive has a brain just like yours I was like oh that's good 
What a sick insult. <laughs> yeah, great insult. And so how do you start, like if I say I have a box, I have a hole in it, so I'm ready to keep some bees. Like well, how do I make them come and live in the box? So you just get a special box. <laughs> you put the frames in it. So like um, it's essentially just uh, just a box and it has an entrance to the front mm-hmm. and it has um, a way for you to put the frames in. So generally it'll have... 10 or 12 frames in it so each frame is going to have a foundation of wax on it they'll build up themselves in it you generally start off with a nucleus hive so just a nuke they come in smaller boxes called nuke boxes so that might have five or six frames in it and they'll start out so that might be a split from a larger colony of bees where they take two or three frames of brood a frame mm. of stores of honey Okay, so you have a little seed. Yeah, exactly. And is there a queen, a queen in there or already? Or yeah, you, you add a queen in? You'd introduce a queen into it. So some people okay. are just rare queens. They have um, the smaller hives called apodeas, which they use to rare queens in. Deadly. So you, like, you, like um, the bees will naturally tend to, to swarm or to try and supersede the queen. What sometimes people do is they'll graft the queen cell mm. off and into one of these apodeas. And that might be just one frame with some brood, with some worker bees, and they'll gradually rare that queen after becoming used to her pheromones and that'll build yeah. up into a larger nucleus and then to a larger hive after. Imagine that was your job like raising queen bees. Queen maker. Yeah. <laughs> you, can, you can buy them in the post as well. You can get a queen bee posted to you. <laughs> yeah. I must get a few. Yeah. Wait, so you're saying that they come in a little tic-tac box yeah, almost. Yeah, basically a little, little tic-tac box and it is um, it's got air ventilation holes in it. It's got um, some food for the queen so a kind of a fondant for it to keep her going for a while. And it's um, arranged so there's the perfect dimensions to fit in between the frames in the yeah. hive. And the amount of fondant that's there is just enough so that you get her, you can put her in. The other bees won't immediately attack her and try and kill her because they're not used to her. It'll give them time to get used to her scent. So it's like some seal that it takes a while for them to yeah, eat through or whatever. Just, yeah, they, them, okay. the other bees and her will eat through it. It's a wax fondant seal. It's all very organized and regulated and everyone... No, they so all have their own job. <laughs> yeah, so, and if, so if I was one, but I meant even that the size of the thing fits in the frame and all yeah. the frames are similar. But could I get these queen bees sent to my enemy in the post? <laughs> I, I could do. Just They're kind of useless. They'd be like, why do I have this box of... Uh... Yeah, queen won't, queen won't sting or do anything, so... Really? No. I don't think queens are stingers, actually. I thought it's really possible. interesting the way, like, you have a, a kind of a grid where, or, like, bars that the queen can't get above so that she doesn't, like, just fill all of the those little wax capsules with eggs yeah so that you don't end up with like honey full of bee larvae or whatever Ew. yeah there's just no commercial value if there's if it's eggs in larvae. It. Yeah, yeah people aren't gonna eat that they're happy eating fish eggs but they won't eat bee eggs well, what is <laughs> well they do actually oh, really? i only discovered this really recently reading up on something but apparently because like you can eat honey people harvest honey but they also harvest pollen as well so you can put a metal grid at the front of the hive to knock off the pollen some people take it because they think it's um, it's good for their immune system. Yeah. Especially if you've got hay fever to be used to local pollen. Yeah. But then some people can have a serious allergic reaction to it. But it's the same with the brood. So the eggs and larvae, when they're in their developmental stage, it's called the brood. Mm. But apparently people eat it as well because oh. they... It's, apparently it's very high in protein as well. It's a good replacement for... I imagine so. level of protein for yeah. chicken or beef. But again, you can have a really bad allergic reaction to it. Yeah, I guess like it's like anybody being allergic to like just normal hay fever or like bee stings. I guess it's the same sort of thing. Yeah. But um, you also hear of people just eating honey that's made locally to try and suppress yeah. like hay fever and things like that as well. So what is honey? <laughs> like where is that? Good question. Did, did they spit it out or it's regurgitated something? Goo. Yeah. How do yeah. bees make it? So like when the worker bees are off foraging, they're collecting honey or they're collecting nectar. They're taking nectar from plants. Which is just sugar, basically. Yeah, basically sugar water. And they're well, good sugar water, not the yeah. bad sugar water that yeah. we have to sometimes give If them. only we had massive flowers where we could just like dive in and get a little suck now yeah. and then. You know. Get a big sunflower and just give you some <laughs> yeah. of that. But um, they also collect the pollen in little baskets on their legs called corbiculae. Oh. So when they come back to the hive, the other works in the hive so depending on the age of the worker bee it has a particular function so the younger ones generally stay in the hive cleaning out cells then for that's for about a week then a week after that they're going to be uh, taking pollen and nectar from the foraging bees and then a week after that then they're out foraging themselves and the rest of their time is that's spent cool. move up foraging. the ranks. yeah 
But they, uh, when they come back in, then the because they have two stomachs, one is for themselves, one is for collecting the nectar. What? <laughs> yeah. Do you so not have they, two stomachs? <laughs> I've got two. I've got three. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, the worker bees take it, and the pollen is disseminated in the hive as well by other worker bees. Um, they take the nectar, then the worker bees digest it a bit as well. Mm. So whatever enzymes in their stomach, they break it down from complex sugars into simple sugars. Then they essentially regurgitate it into the cells and um, it's evaporated. They evaporate the moisture on it. So through fanning in the hive and regulating the temperature, they get it down to a moisture content of, I think it's 20%. Mm. So there's... Turns into definitely like, then. Yeah, turns into like a it goop. Um, I, when I was looking up stuff about bees, I came across like, it's crazy to make like a pound of honey. They need to like take nectar from something like eight million flowers. Yeah, and you just scoop okay. it away. Yeah, and you're just like, and you're just thank you. On your toast. Yeah. Thank you all those flowers. <laughs> yeah, it's such a like crap ratio of flower to honey. <laughs> so just taking honey, like, is, is that mean, or does that actually help stimulate them to make more of it, or is it actually like do they need it? It depends because. Like, um, like they're saving it for themselves, are they? They make well, it for your... yeah, but they're saving they're saving for themselves. So like, if you had say a hive, a w- completely wild hive of bees, they wouldn't make nearly as much honey because it's it's like selective breeding for livestock. They've been selectively bred since like bees have been around. People have collected honey since eight thousand BC or something like that. Like there's yeah. cave paintings of people collecting honey yeah. and foraging for honey and. The Egyptians probably were the first to actually domesticate them or pseudo domesticate them, whatever. It's, it's way. mad to think that somebody like eight thousand years ago just like probably whacked some hive to get rid of bees, and then there's just like a load of goo coming out, and they're like, "Hmm, I'm gonna just yeah, eat just, this." They still do it like in Nepal or in like in Himalayas and that. Like, because yeah. down in the more temperate regions, you get bees, so they they climb up cliffs, like they'll be there, mm. like just comb. They won't even be inside a hive; just so comb hanging from the cliffs, and they'll smoke them away and just cut off a bit and be like nice bees Jeez, just later. hanging there but lots of other animals eat it as well like called apes and monkeys mm. and stuff. oh yeah so they probably see other people doing it there mm. people <laughs> yeah and bears like don't give a fuck like so hairy you know they just yeah, yeah they that. just scoop in like, like and they take the bees and all the larvae and all so look, there's a big load of protein for them as well for yeah for their hibernation it's true because you know? one of the ways people are like oh there's global warming we have to stop eating meat one of the solutions some people are saying is just to eat insects because they're so high in protein and you can make them quicker. But you've quicker. got such a collapse yeah. in insect populations now yeah. that's no longer an option. Maybe. Yeah. You'd have to like breed them purposely for that, right? Farm, yeah. yeah. And I wouldn't like to be like a cockroach farmer or whatever. Ugh, that sounds <laughs> awful. I hate cockroaches. They're absolutely disgusting. Well, there's one on your neck. Only in definitely a couple enough. of times they're horrible. Yeah. Some them all over the place as in America Oh, they're the worst. And, and so you touched on something there that's worth going over. So insects collapsing and bees in particular, everyone is worried about that they're going away. And why are they dying off? Or just insects in general or well, bees? bees. Or... What was the bee stuff? There's loads of <laughs> different ones. Like there's, there's certain diseases that affect them. There's parasites. There's overuse of uh, neonicotinoids or whatever you call them. Insecticides. Like... Based into, insecticides yeah. that actually literally destroy them like they brains essentially melt away and they just do stupid things and don't work anymore mm-hmm. so we had um, one of our hives about a year or two years ago like the fields out behind us like they're so potatoes and your man used to spray them mm-hmm. and then one or two of our hives stopped um, the queen stopped laying so we reckon that that affected them like they yeah. no they generally wouldn't um, forage on potatoes I wouldn't think because they're self seeding because they're tubers but they possibly, oh, yeah. possibly do go visit the flowers. I'm yeah, sure they do or not, they're also just nearby. Because I saw, yeah, it's like it's, it's, I saw yeah. something recently where, like, even insecticides that have kind of been uh, proven for like these are okay for bees; they don't really harm them. They found out that in really small quantities, like given over a sustained period of time, will affect like a bee's sense of direction and sense of smell. So they don't know where they're going, so they won't collect as much like nectar for making honey, and then the hive will eventually collapse because every bee is only making like seventy percent of what it should be making. Which is also like yeah. terrifying to and think that yeah. all of these insecticides that are like, oh yeah, they're fine, and they're actually not fine. Yeah, and once you're just making just not enough to sustain, eventually yeah. it'll collapse. Yeah, but none of the, those like things, insecticides that have had long-term studies done either. You know, they just yeah. are short-term. Oh, they're not killing them. 
Yeah, especially on like large scales with like lots of hives and stuff, I'd say it's probably pretty new. So is like commercial level honey farming bad or is that good? Like do the bees have a good time on like if I buy Boyne Valley honey or whatever? <laughs> free yeah, like free range bees. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like I think they do. So depends completely on their or whoever's keep on the beekeeper's husbandry of them. But generally it's in their interest, like any farmer or anyone to care for their yeah. stock or care for the bees so just treating them for disease and but I had honey in your house and it was delicious and so flavorful and stuff and like honey really varies all you can get some honeys that are very yeah because it's blended you see because uh, it could be like if you pick up a jar of honey in Aldi or Little or wherever and look at it it might be it might say a blend of EU and non-EU honeys or a blend of non-EU honeys yeah so, that's bees all around the world they don't even know they don't yes. there <laughs> giving me honey <laughs> and, you can, and you can tell from the honey what they've been foraging on so like you could like heather honey like is yeah it's a big the best one you can get yeah. like probably i think anyway is we get mm. a bit of it at home because like there's so much heather up in uh, county wicklow like and the bees will go for miles so we're really close to heather yeah but like it's it's that bit thicker and darker it's just gorgeous and do bees mind if it's there's not a variety of flowers and stuff like are they happy to just keep going to one the same flower yeah so well they go generally different times of the year like so there's a few that are staples for them so like one of the most important one for bees is dandelions because one yeah, of the first ones out and it's mm. it's so it's so important for bees like if you have people spraying off dandelions or cutting away dandelions like it'll have a big impact on bees especially if they come out a bit earlier mm. people um, hate dandelions I mean. yeah well, dandelions are lovely yeah. I think they're a lovely flower like just because they're in the wrong place so uh, they're, they're called the weed yeah. Yeah. the weed's just a flower in the wrong place uh, that's very poetic this is so philosophical <laughs> yeah that's mad and so are bees a year round thing or do they have a season when they like so, do the business and stuff well, they're generally on, they're generally active from late well depending how warm it is because like it's so variable now but generally they shouldn't be out any time earlier than spring and then they should be in the hive over winter yeah. so but when you see one out in like October they're always really pissed off and they want to sting you yeah I don't know <laughs> bees never want to sting you unless yeah. you're getting really in the way I've never been stung by a bee Mm. Like I've been, have you? Yeah, well, I've been stung a handful of times by honeybees, and, and I've you been keep literally, them. I've been literally <laughs> taking the roof off their house, and <laughs> taking them all take, over the place, stealing their honey. <laughs> so you can get, you can get particularly nasty ones, like certain strains of them can be. That's the thing, and like and some nasty. some types of like honeybee are bred to be like less aggressive, right? Because they're easier to keep. So but, yeah, Which they generally are. Like yeah. there's, if you cross certain ones, like there's. Like the ones we have here are native native Irish honeybee, which is European honeybee. Like it's Apis, yeah. Apis mellifera mellifera. Uh, so we, we call it, yeah, black European bee. We just call it the Irish honey bee, but mm. in the UK, they call it the native English bee. And yeah. It's a native European bee. Or whatever. It's native to like, so but they're, like, region. they're generally really calm. Like you yeah. could go with them without smoking them sometimes, depending on them, depending on the queen as well, because the queen, it's her farm that control everything. So if she's a, a right old bitch, then the rest <laughs> of them aren't going to be nice. And do those suits stop you getting stung? But, For the most part. Yeah. Like, the, like they can still sting you through sometimes and... Yeah. most of the times you're going to get stung in your hands so you can yeah. like I might can use gloves sometimes but generally I will they're very cumbersome so you might just throw them off sometimes but then it'll get you all over the hands oh, if they that's want so to. brave I wouldn't be taking off my gloves and going and also you probably don't know this or you might not but are there any bees without sting uh, without little stingers uh, drones don't have stingers mm. so it's like in the in a beehive you've got worker bees you've got drones you've got one queen so basically the queen, her job is to just lay the eggs. The workers, they clean the cells, they feed the larvae once the eggs develop and they clean up, they take in the, the forage, they disperse the pollen and they make the bee bread and that as well. Bee bread? Yes. Yeah, so like Sounds delicious. Yeah. So what they do is like, with the, like when they bring in the pollen, they mix pollen and nectar together okay. and whatever way they digest it with enzymes, but it's very nutritious for for the mm. uh, larvae so first of all they feed them royal jelly for a few days mm. then they start feeding them the um, the bee bread royal jelly bee bread this is delicious it's the stuff. life <laughs> and if you keep you keep like you keep feeding if you keep feeding one royal jelly then because it's so much higher in protein it allows mm. their reproductive organs to develop fully and that's where you get a queen so that's mm. the difference in it and that's why they're bigger and longer as well they've got more protein they're bigger their bits are all inside them mm. eat developed. too much protein and you'll turn into a queen yeah but like the <laughs> Like the uh, the drones, like they don't have they don't have stingers because um, they their job is solely to mate. So they, when the drones are laid, they take a bit longer to develop as well because they're bigger. They go fly off, 
they've got these areas called drone congregation areas. It's like you might get drones from different highs. Like it's generally a clear area, mm. about 10 or so meters off the ground. So the queen will go out on a nice sunny day. She'll, all the lads will have at her. It's like the dance floor in Copper. She's, all the lads are coming in at her. And whichever, and she'll mate with a few of them, whatever, but every time she mates with them, she might mate with one or might mate with a few, depending on how much she, how, how, much how, she how, how well they're but looking. It, but literally, like, they, that's their job to go and do it. And the exertion of it is so much that they literally just arrest and fall to the ground. Oh. So, so would you rather have a stinger next. or spend your life mating? <laughs> see, they get to do it once, they die in ecstasy. That's just one good thing. But then she gets her fill and that's it. She'll never fly out and mate again. Like, that's all the sperm to do her for her lifetime. <laughs> so, she she's said well, that. She's <laughs> she said it. That's enough sperm to do me for her life. Maybe that's the way it's telling me to fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you're also saying that they're in, get kind of in September and then they go in the hive in d- December. Kind of like, depending on how cool it is. Like, you might get yeah. them out October, like, Ideally, you wouldn't see them out too much in November. So yeah. what they'll do is they'll cluster in the hive to keep themselves warm because they have to maintain. Like penguins. I was looking at this; they have to maintain, maintain like seven or eight degrees Celsius at least yeah, to like not die. Yeah. So and they just they just to, vibrate to keep warm. Yeah, like they have to. Just mental. Uh, yeah, they, I think it has to be thirty-two degrees for them to fly. That's their internal temperature. The temperature of the hive yeah. has to be maintained. At and that it has to be thirty-two fully, degrees for the. Act queen to lay eggs and stuff yeah. like for all those eggs to survive it needs to be 32 degrees yeah and so when you see a bee like sometimes if they're stopped like you know and you were saying about if someone has if they see a hungry bee they might get a teaspoon of sugar especially for mm. bumblebees and it gives them a little burst of energy and sometimes they might just be stopped and you see them shivering extra like vibrating just to stay warm just to actually stay warm so they're gonna stay warm yeah, yeah. but, they, but like they might be resting as well because they're those muscles like there's thousands of muscles moving to generate the flight for them and yeah. there's so much heat actually generated by those muscles yeah. that was the uh, old uh, myth wasn't it like oh people don't know how the bumblebee actually flies oh it's yeah aerodynamically impossible yeah. no, no it's the, not the surface yeah. area yeah. of the wing he's doing, doing, doing a lot of work yeah <laughs> a serious amount of because yeah. I was, I was thinking end. it's crazy like in you know for example like North America mm. in winter time when they have those like really like bad cold snaps and it's like minus 25 degrees for like three weeks mm. like that's really tough on beehives to try and like they need loads of yeah. extra honey to keep warm for that like it's mm. crazy yeah that's a lot of shivering it's a lot of shivering but then like that's where some materials in beehives can help as well because you can have wooden hives which would be the, keep it like insulated more, more of them are polystyrene now yeah so they're they're easier to clean which is good from a health perspective for the bees they're easier to keep warm and like in America, sometimes they put them indoors. Like yeah. In Canada, they've got uh, purpose-built barns where they bring them in and they're ventilated and everything just so there's no buildup of carbon dioxide, so there's not too much moisture in the hives, so they don't get disease and stuff. So mm. one of the the reasons that we kind of touched on, but insect populations are collapsing around the world and some people think there's like decline of 90% in some types of insect. And we've I've talked to you about it before, Joe, but... Mm. Um, it's called the windshield hypothesis and people just have this sense that if you drive your car now and you just look how many bugs are in front of your car it's just not what it was a few decades ago mm-hmm. but one of the reasons is insects are so much more susceptible to climate change because they're so small and there's such a narrow range of temperatures and actually we were talking about it last week mm-hmm. it was at the size if you're a big mammal you're a bear you can survive a bit too hot, a bit too cold. Yeah. You know, you can have layers of fat or whatever, but insects need a really specific temperature. And as mm-hmm. soon as, yeah, summer comes a bit early or it's a particularly like cold winter, it really just kills a lot of insects. Mm. So that's shit. <laughs> Sad times. But do you, um, the other thing I want to ask you is like, do you, are you, would you be attached to your bees like uh, in the same way you could get attached to a cat God. or a dog or is it more like a fish and you're like oh, I have a fish but you know, <laughs> nobody's, gonna, attached. nobody's attached to fish is that what you're saying <laughs> well, if, right, if I had a fish and someone's like hey do you want to go to Japan for a month I wouldn't be like oh who's going to mind my fish oh yeah I'll mind, like, mind your fish <laughs> there you yeah. go you never or, have to or, worry or about or it you lose see the mind I'll come to Japan yeah <laughs> Yeah. So, it's, but what about your bees? Would you be concerned about like are you attached to them and you're like, oh, I miss them. I wonder what they're up to today, or like, is it therapeutic going to see them and stuff? Oh, really? Yeah, really, it's really therapeutic. Like just actually going down and working with them is brilliant. Really, yeah. just like if it's a particularly warm day, like you can sit, like you can sit a foot from the at the hive. Mm. You can stand right at the door of that the entrance. So like they're not going to sting you yeah. unless yeah. you aggravate them. It's therapeutic to watch them foraging and stuff like that if you're in the garden and see them in flowers but 
Did I talk to you? <laughs> Time to burn things. <laughs> Could, could I have them in a residential place, or is it like what do people oh, yeah. have, uh, oh, like yeah, urban hives and stuff? Yeah. I think oh, there are oh, things. Yeah, like, so there's um, like basically all around the country. There's um, there's um, beekeeping um, collectives. Yeah, like there's God, can I give factions, <laughs> associations. That's the word. So like you got like I'm in the South Kildare, I think it is, um, or no, North Kildare. I'm in North hey, Kildare. North Kildare. Yeah. Like so, they're like so. I go to like I go to the meetings in Ace for the association there, and yeah. that's where I most people I know um, who do the bees as well. But the South Hill there, which would be based in Athai, I think, and then there's mm-hmm. like but one of the biggest ones in the country is Dublin. Yeah, obviously Dublin's most people in that, right? But like urban beekeeping is a big thing because if you think about the gardens that you'll have in um, cities, you're going to have a much wider range of flowers. Yeah. And Things yeah. are generally flower a bit earlier and a bit longer, and like a cities. wider range of flowers. Because you've got a microclimate yeah. with all the concrete, better retention of heat, and that. So, mm. but yeah, urban beekeeping is a big thing. There's um, Belvedere College keep beehives in the roof. Really? Yeah, that's so cool. They're, 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 they're thinking of doing it in my my old lad's school, O'Connell School. They're thinking of doing that as well. So. Mm. I'm trying to push it because I yeah. give them a hand do it as well. Yeah. But it's it'd be a very cool thing to have in schools, like yeah. to like and if people wanted to thing, learn yeah. how to keep bees. Like. And yeah, to, 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 Christian brothers and they have them as well, I think. But to learn like, oh, don't just kill them when you see them. Because even oh, yeah. when I was growing up, it was like, uh, you know, it wasn't uncommon. Too to many bees a, around. Have a jam jar, <laughs> yeah, with half of the water and just kill as many bees. Really? Yeah, but we're wasps. Yeah. I never did that. Yeah. Or like maybe wasps, not bees. Oh, wasps. Well, <laughs> get the wasps. Yeah, wasps are evil. Yeah, <laughs> everybody knows. Do that. they make honey? No, do they make anything? Useful? They don't make honey. No, they're, like, they're not. They're not even. They're actually very important because they like mm-hmm. the bastards, but they're important in terms of the wider ecosystem. So, yeah. like, there would have been time years ago. Like, I remember we used to wasp nests were a pain in the ass in the shed. You'd get rid of it, or if you're sitting outside the pub or whatever with your coke yeah. or cider, or something like that. Like, they'd be flying. It's like that yeah. doesn't happen anymore. Even last year, by wasps. So, no. Doesn't happen. Yeah, yeah, but I know what you mean. If if they were just removed, yeah, you wouldn't know what the unintended consequences would be yeah. further. <laughs> like there's some bogus quote attributed to Einstein about if all the insects went, then there'd be four months and we'd starve because mm-hmm. we'd have no food. And I think it's so like all he never said it, but the sentiment was kind of half true. But mm. yeah, probably not four months, but I don't think it'd take that long. Yeah, but yeah, because bees is a period. It's not just honey that would go, but flowers mm-hmm. wouldn't be Any pollinated. Plants, yeah. 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 Well, who needs plants? <laughs> <laughs> Only feed is the best plant. Carnivores. Yeah, we just feed the cows corn. So, uh, <laughs> we'll just eat other carnivores. <laughs> are, are monocrops bad for bees as well then? Doesn't, they don't really care too much about... If you have, mm, what's a monocrop? What do you mean? Like yeah. uh, just replacing uh, a small forest area with... Oh, with one... Of, yeah, like corn or yeah, something. Or, 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 or even if it's just a pine tree, but it's just one particular <laughs> well, thing. They, gen- they generally wouldn't be pollinated anyway I don't yeah. know about pine trees maybe like I know some trees will be like sycamore they go mad bumblebees especially yeah. mad for sycamore yeah Cause, but um, well, like corn and that like they're kind of grasses and grasses are mostly wind pollinated so mm. they don't care to them but, but like yeah you need a good diverse range of crops for them ideally native ones because again like that's the thing you can introduce insects and stuff to an area but like you introduce like a plant to an area so you bring in a particular invasive dandelion here and the bees go mad for it like mm. you're possibly aiding the spread of that particular plant and that might be to the benefit of your bees but might be detrimental to other mm. fauna yeah. it's that like Japanese not weed at every release days yeah and you, meant you can get honey from it I was in Boston I was at a farmer's market and they had jars of not weed honey and it was actually black like treacle oh weird so I, was, I, I wanted to bring a jar for home it was kind of like I don't know, should I bring it home because it's not weed? <laughs> oh, yeah. I get it through customs as well. Yeah, they definitely take it off. Yeah. See, yeah. not all over the place as well. Like, it's, it's bad around this part, I think, as well. A certain yeah. inch of core, it's bad. Affects people's insurance. People are pissed about the not weed. The um, other thing that we kind of touched on slightly, but you're almost like a self-sufficient... So you live in Wicklow, near the mountains. <laughs> <laughs> A mountain man. Yeah. I was like, are they mountains? I guess they're mountains. Hills. Yeah. Hollywood. Uh, <laughs> and Hollywood is cool because it actually has a Hollywood sign. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it's almost like a self-sufficient little farm because like when I was in your house, you have like tomatoes, honey, other stuff. Chickens? Do you have chickens? Chickens, stuff, chickens. Chickens, cat. So I want to bring up a chicken fact that I learned today. And uh, this is crazy. Have you ever heard of chicken hypnotism? 
Yes. Uh, yeah. Yes. I had never heard that. Yeah. That is so yeah. weird. You can just hypnotize a chicken. Yeah. And it's such a weird thing. You just put their head on the ground and draw a line and then they stop moving. Yeah. What not... what is going on there? Yeah. I don't know. I really want to try it. Have you ever tried it with your chickens? No. Ours are pretty I know. Ours Annoying. Are mad. <laughs> you can like you can mad walk, you can walk in the garden and just go tup, 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 like this morning I was a few bits of go oh they come running like mad. Like did you ever see that the, there's a video on YouTube of some guy in China somewhere he's blowing the whistle and they're running down the mountains like <laughs> How many chickens do you have? All the chickens swarming. It was literally, they come running down the steps of the garden and like jump because I'm throwing a bit of rice out of them. Do the chickens whatever. swarm more often than the bees? <laughs> At least no. For us, so bee swarming is... A friend, a friend of my, um, well, my uh, parents, she got bees last year. Another friend of ours is helping her get them started. Yeah. But um, she got married on Good Friday. So her partner got married. And the next day, she came home, whatever, her parents go on the honeymoon and uh, the bees are starting to swarm. Oh. So by the time someone came up trying to give her a hand, they're already gone. So, oh, that's annoying. So, who would win, your bees or your chickens in a fight? It's more bees, so I think. Uh, yeah, there's way more they, bees. They like swim over. It's like the you know, thousand ducks or one lion. <laughs> yeah, or a horse-sized duck or. Uh, yeah. But swarming horse. bees are not aggressive. So, like, if you see a swarm of bees on a fence post, like they're not aggressive because they're at that point they've got nothing to defend so they're actually yeah. non-aggressive they're just looking for somewhere to live yeah and that's just oh. a reproduction like swarming is some people allow swarming to happen some people don't because if yeah. you have, like say two or three hives and one of them swarms the queen goes off with two thirds of it like yeah. there's another queen potentially in development there yeah. but if you're doing it just to get your bit of honey then it's gonna it's gonna impact on your own I mean if you've got that, if but... you've got like spare hives and stuff it's something you might want to happen if you could convince them to like move into those hives right yeah so that people do that like they might get a they get bait hives yeah. and put them up on top of their sheds that's cool. so they like might come into it like bait it with <laughs> um, old comb or with things like lemongrass to come towards yeah. it that's mad I was actually have you ever heard you know obviously you've heard of Bookfast yeah. everybody's heard of book, the book fast bees. yeah there's bees uh, that yeah, are from the same monastery yeah and they're, and they're like, actually like the one of those aggressive kind of strains yeah but they were they were well, bred like some guy in some guy some uh, like monk some brother in like the Bookfast Monastery back in like 1905 or 1910 uh, realised that bees were dying off because it was some like big I don't know die off of bees back then yeah. but uh, he started like breeding bees to be more hardy like genetically or whatever but um Probably it's like it's mad to, like yeah. so yeah, I think eventually there was some like hullabaloo at the monastery and he lost his job there <laughs> as yeah. beekeeper yeah. but then like nobody kept the bees and they kind of like trying to make a stuff. super race of uh, aggressive bees but yeah but there's actually there is some like genetic uh, studies like genetically modifying bees mm. um, I was looking at one study in the, one Germany of the, one of the only three insects to be fully like the genome is fully yeah, mapped for bees yeah they yeah, mapped it in like 2006 or something flies or something yeah um, and like so they have the whole genome done out and they're trying to basically edit it like you know put in at the minute they're fairly unsuccessful with any sort of editing they've been trying to do so they're literally just trying to inject them with a bit of like genetic material that will make them like you know uh, like their tissues will like glow under UV light and stuff to see if it actually worked but most of the time when they genetically modified the uh, so they do it in like when it's really really young like basically just an egg um, but then because the egg looks damaged to the bees, the bees will go and kill the egg. Mm. So they can't get hives to take to like genetically modified bees, uh, which That's is so, clever to so hard to do. That the bees are protected, yeah. It's That's also interesting in Germany, they have to keep it, they have to keep them in like a big covered tent yeah. because of the like laws on genetically modified uh, things. You know, the EU is pretty strict on all of that. So mm. um, yeah, because they could easily, yeah, could, could easily get out or... Yeah, and then you don't know what effect that would have on yeah. the ecosystem. Right? And also, people not close to the like, CRISPR genome technology, it sounds easier than it is. You just insert some DNA, you map your yeah. four but something and... With something as complex as bees and beehives, I guess, there's yeah. so many, other, like something like that, where the bees are just going along and they're like, oh, this egg has been damaged, I'm just going to kill it. Yeah. And you're like, don't kill them, that genetically yeah. modified yeah. bees. I'm yeah. trying to save you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Find a way of getting the bees to, or rearing them. Yeah, machines, so, well, it is interesting. Like the the PhD, no, I think she was a postdoc researcher working with them, but she got stung so many times, like working with them and trying to you know 
because you have to take the eggs out inject them and put them back in and it's all inside that tent she got stung so many times that she became um, allergic allergic to yeah. bees then and she can't go into the tent yeah, you anymore develop, you can develop a allergy from getting stung yeah. that's a, an intro to a superhero story though genetically modified bees <laughs> She's a bee, bee lady yeah. she's getting stung <laughs> Yeah, and but so what are they trying to improve about bees? Just basically like, make them like uh, more immune, probably. Yeah, yeah less susceptible to, to parasites and disease. Yeah, and oh, yes. bacteria so, and do you want to tell us what that mite is? Well, the varroa mite. Yeah, varroa destructor or something like that is the mm. proper name. Yeah. It's like a little red mite, isn't it? Yeah, nasty little buggers. They're tiny as well. Aren't they're re- like they're really small, but like you can, you'd be surprised how easy you can see them. Like you can see on them a on a frame of bees, you see them on the bee. So yeah, these are mites that can enter bees, go into the col- uh, the hives, and then often lead to colony collapse disorder. They don't know that for sure because yeah. colony collapse disorder has actually been around. Like it's kind of a broad yeah. term. They don't for, really know exactly if there's one or yeah. a factor if it's like because like that thing, like effects. you said about the buckfast bees in 1905, like mm. in the early 1900s, somewhere in England, might have been the Isle of Wight or Isle of Man, yeah. there was uh, a space of like co- bee colonies uh, yeah. disappearing. They used to call it be disappearance disease or something yes, like that yeah the, I was reading about it as well I think yeah. it is dialed right and like across even across all of England yeah. they found like, like they just the disappear or die times. off um, and just basically the the, high, the colony can't spore seven it's like that's the big thing on yeah. it but, but like the varroa so the thing with them is they can only reproduce inside a beehive so when the varroa gets in it's like basically will spread from hive to hive by being on a flower so like yeah. you can like yeah. I actually saw a video there a while ago of uh, it was a like really slow down one of the varroa like jumping like a tick or a fleal like a fleal jump straight onto the bee latches onto the bee's abdomen once it gets into the hive it'll go into a cell that hasn't been capped yet so it'll yeah. be a cell with a larva that's say a couple of days old mm. she'll go in snuggle in the bottom of it and then as uh, attached to that larva and um, start feeding off it she'll then reproduce um, lay in seven or eight eggs and generally one of them will be male the rest mm. will be female I think the males are white I don't think I've ever seen a white one but the females are the red ones yeah and then they'll feed off that bee it'll lead to viruses like um, deformed wing virus and that because they're they're sucking away basically yeah. all the fatty tissues and proteins yeah. out of the bee and it's mad and things that through it. so it's not that the mite carries any diseases with it it's that the mite actually is it leads to it yeah, yeah. so I suppose it's feeding off and it's like I suppose it's like a Given some sort of a blood disorder to the bee and it affects yeah. their development or it's just stunting their growth so they just can't a, fly in a useless space. Often when we think about scales, we're like, oh, insects, mites, whatever, they're all small. But to think that the bee, like, which is, is large insect, compared to the bee, yeah, I know, it's mite, crazy. Uh, it has an insect on it. Like, you know, <laughs> it just keeps going yeah, down. Yeah. You get to add insect on it, yeah. yeah. What's on the mite? Yeah. It's a quantum realm. Tiny, tiny, tiny. Yeah. The poor yeah. mite collapse disorder. There was one other thing I wanted to bring up about honey before we stop talking about bees and honey because yeah, I yeah. feel like we're going that way. Yeah. But um, we mentioned about like you know people eating honey for like the anti like allergen effects and stuff. But people also use honey for like antibacterial things. So yeah. one of my friends was uh, was like so one of their friends was climbing and fell and hurt them hurt their heel like hit it really hard off the ground and they like shattered or something and had really awkward operation to get it back together uh, and it kind of got infected and it wouldn't work and then they had another accident where they fell on it again while it was healing so it was really infected they were on loads of antibiotics and they couldn't get rid of it uh, and then they started putting like manuka honey on it yeah. and it went within like a week or two oh, it's or like, it's manuka honey serious stuff like because like the, the antibiotics wouldn't really work because there wasn't really good blood flow to that area mm. so basically yeah. they weren't getting there and then they just like kept slathering on manuka honey and, uh, expensive though oh very expensive yeah, yeah. but it's so, like, so good for they use that in hospitals now as well like, it's just because yeah. it's from tea tree oil yeah because so yeah I was looking up like what is actually causing like what it, first of all I was like is it actually antibacterial or antibiotic like um, but it's basically hydrogen peroxide that's in honey that causes mm. it to be antibacterial which is mental yeah because I knew it was used for bleaching our wounds yeah, yeah. <laughs> used as a preservative like thousands of years ago for fruit and stuff and they think that's how the first alcohol was fermented was Reed. was yeah, it's only, yeah. It was the Reed's fruit great. that was in the but yeah have you ever tried I've never tried to make it but it, I, try, I had for it it's very nice so it's just like alcoholic really sweet mm. alcoholic mm. and so used to love it. so honey <laughs> is yeah book fast I suppose <laughs> but honey is antibacterial then 
So and it says it says it's like an antibiotic and antibacterial. Antibiotics just a broader term, as yeah. in like covers some fungi and stuff like that. But to help your immune system and be antibacterial, for me, you're kind of at odds of how that would like how can it be good for yeah. the immune system? And also, I don't know. Yeah. Well, yeah, I don't know exactly how the immune system, like in terms of allergies and stuff, I don't really yeah. know how that works. Yeah, I'm not sure. Mm. But uh, yeah, then you have like different honeys because they go like bees go to different flowers in different areas will have different antibacterial properties like and that's why you have all those manuka honeys in the shop and some of them have like a rating different factors yeah, on yeah it. and like the higher the number the more expensive it is yeah the one like the pure tea tree oil, like it's like we've got tea tree plants at home in a greenhouse like yeah. my brother got as a present or something like that but the lovely plant but the bee, like in the summer the bees are all over it it's got these little yeah. fruit on it as well just trying to figure out how to get my own oil is out it of. is it edible that fruit i don't know i never actually looked at it they look, they look nice the colors maybe, were maybe. kind of warm me off it's kind of real bright pinky purple maybe like, don't eat it that. That. Wouldn't go away they, look, they look like they look a bit like blueberries <laughs> but they're not you know said very uh sure. <laughs> yeah. looks like blueberries so it's probably fine do that with mushrooms it'll be fine um yeah god that's class it is Cool thing I wanted to bring up. Can I ask you about farming, Joe? You can. I know very little about it. But... <laughs> no, but what I think was cool is because you have the chickens and the bees and the tomatoes and many other ho- horses. We never, we never went through horses. the list of it. We stopped at chickens. Dogs. Last time. Yeah. There's cats, which I don't formally claim, but they just stay there anyway. <laughs> yeah. There's sheep. Nearly done lambing now. Yeah. And, and loads of vegetables and stuff. Not that much now. Chilies are going on okay so far. Yeah, uh, chilies. Broccoli and cauliflower. But I need to put lots of beetles and stuff. And bees and any funny. But it's just real cool the way it's it's almost like um, a self-sufficient little... Like, it, it, even if, if the power went in the entire country for the next two years, I'd say out of everyone, you'd be the most well-suited to actually surviving. Maybe not far went, we'd be goosed. We have a well for our water. And we won't be <laughs> so they'd know, be the yeah, first but, to go. Yeah, yeah he'd be the first so to that's go. Cool, oh, but yeah, have, like, you even have water. But, like, we do have, like, say for the chickens, like, over like over the winter now, they've really kind of laid off laying. So, mm-hmm. so we were actually buying eggs the first time in three or four years. Chickens as well. Yeah. But, um, yeah, well, like, we don't really ever buy eggs or, like, now, once, say, come. October start pulling up onions like we probably won't buy onions then until yeah. February you know. onions keep so well like we oh, yeah. we, we grew well, like yeah. onions at home as well and like you'd take up the batch and like you'd have onions for a year yeah another yeah and the nicer as well yeah and then if you made an onion jam or a relish or something made, I'll get you on that chili show. made chili and kind of tomato relish as last year so my, my motivation for asking you this was because um, if you asked me when I was 18 like where I wanted to live like I could live anywhere rent free I probably would have picked like the middle of a city or something mm-hmm. like New York but now I would be way more inclined to pick somewhere remote or You're more wise a bit of land and <laughs> a bit of land a, a bit of road frontage yeah, yeah. <laughs> a bit of road frontage is key good <laughs> back to the coppers thing yeah. <laughs> good bungalow <laughs> and carlo for me that <laughs> yeah a couple of acres there yeah but there was an argument saying that uh, like the 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 fact that people are so um, so there's this anti-air travel movement in Europe now for climate reasons people are are saying they get the train and they get the train everywhere which is grander in Europe but the Irish trains are terrible to well they don't go anywhere else I suppose but yeah and to go outside of Ireland you have to like get a boat then yeah there's like only five places in the country you can really go on a train I guess you could fly to France and just get a yeah train from there but I mean you're getting on a plane anyway just keep going and the UK (laughs) you could get I suppose the tunnel if you want well tunnel for now yeah Yeah. (laughs) but the it was about how also the um, the powers that be in in, <laughs> in, more in, bees. in in countries have really made people more like want to travel more and have kind of promoted the idea of interconnectedness and like the whole country being connected, the whole of Europe being connected. So you know, your the global, whole global economy. Yeah. Uh, all Ireland economy, all Europe economy, all exactly, yeah. Economy. Lots of travel and like where the roads are good. Everyone like, and it's not uncommon. I mean, if you go back a thousand years, no one would have travelled forty miles a day. Never mind, like which I do daily for you know work. Never mind, um, actually just going to Australia for on holidays or something. Yeah. Um, but and also because then it's, the argument of the article was that it's easier to control an interconnected economy that you know people will kind of do what you want then. 
But if you're standing outside that and you set up a little self-sufficient place on a mountain, you're like, ah, fuck it, I'm going to just take my own water out of the ground, grow my own <laughs> eggs. You know what I mean? Like, people can't... Yeah. But you still are very dependent on a couple of things, like the electricity, right? Yeah, so, and there's not much you can... Like, you put up a windmill, I guess, but I don't know how much... Solar area. panels probably be... Yeah, yeah, solar solar panels, panels would be pretty crap here, I guess, yeah. in Ireland. But every little helps. Yeah, just get everything. Some geothermal. You could use that. Yeah. yeah. You're, you're not a need doomsday a, prepper. Need a, bit of, need a bit of electricity still for your pump and that. do that, yeah? Mm. Would we'll, we'll you set up a little doomsday shelter? A little, little bunker. <laughs> it sounds like a great project. Style bunker thing, I don't know. Yeah. I'd definitely just, just be doing bad. mad shit out if I had like a load of land that wasn't in the city. Yeah. Just a load of space to do projects. That'd Grow be great. A load of weed. Yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. Obviously. Got so much weed. <laughs> <laughs> do these pollinate weed owner? Probably. I don't know. I remember chatting with my friends about this before and like, they might. I don't know actually. Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll never know because it's illegal. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> Swiftly moving on. <laughs> um, and it's also good that, yeah, so I really admire the fact that you were saying you had a, a sheep and you have to like raise it and you have lambs and care for it and then you have to take it to the place it goes and then it turns into the meat. <laughs> <laughs> so disconnected yeah. from the, what's happening here. Okay, but that's... Like, scene missing, missing. Yeah. Scene missing. Yeah. Lamb shops in your place. But that that's exactly it. Like, and like I, that's what I admire about it, that you, you're, you're not having the scene missing. Yeah. Uh, you know, you're actually like seeing the process through, which is nice. And then you're also, it's not a factory farmed or anything. So, you know, as a vegetarian for a few years, Dils is currently fighting that struggle. Trying to, yeah, yeah, trying to give it a go. I fell off the wagon. And then you probably have the most ethical approach of everyone as well, where you're like, no, I'm going to take it at, at face value and, and yeah. throw this. So like take cool. my sheep, grow it and... Kill it. Yeah, I know what yeah, I'm doing. Yeah. I'm not just hiding behind the. Yeah, I think part of the reason that I was like, you know what, I'll try being a vegetarian for a while was just because I was like, could I kill a chicken or a sheep or a lamb? I don't know if I could. Yeah. I don't think I could. That was my argument. Someone was like, you can have a burger, but here's a cow, you have to kill it. Like, yeah. yeah. If, if I knew I could do that, if I needed to, then I would probably be like more open to like having it yeah also. because it's that less like you don't feel like a hypocrite as much because you're like oh, yeah that's I'm mainly it is so I feel like such a hypocrite just like you know going into a restaurant and just like oh here's a load of beef I'm like I don't I like it's so disconnected from where that came from and everything yeah like, I don't know. and it kind of talks to that uh, thing we were talking about the last day about the pig's heads were in the abattoir that was mad wasn't it maybe was actually mad. did you see that story <laughs> oh, we talked about yeah. it extensively so we won't go into it but uh, basically they took 32 pigs heads from an abattoir and four hours after they were, were killed they pumped some fluid through the brains yeah, and some like blood substitute got the brain back online um but they suppressed any brain activity that was yeah, resembling like, consciousness like so, base function brain activity um but like they, would it not be like like they got like, cells like, working. like they would have, like how they get cells working like that long without oxygen like would it not have been told so this was the thing they weren't really i think they weren't it wasn't conclusive whether they were like actually bringing the entire brain back or if it was like you know the damaged cells from oxygen deprivation weren't working and it was just getting the other cells working again and if they were just delaying the inevitable they weren't really sure so was anyone ever actually looked at that i wonder like even for human brains like if there if there's like residual memory kind of written in or yeah or something like that like a so there are companies that also are trying to read brain waves from people in comas and stuff and try to interpret it try to match it up to there was so something can, about that generally wasn't there for yeah. to substitute speech I think turn your thoughts into speech well possibly uh, I didn't say anything but what's the Elon Musk has a company doesn't he? what's the name of that company mind I'll Sorry. look it up I'll, yeah, do a, look it up. I'll do a quick Google in the meantime I will talk to Joe about something else do you uh, do you shear your sheep and I, we get we get one of the lads coming to like I don't do it yeah I but is there anything to do with the wool, or is sometimes the wool is just crappy, and then you don't do it. You throw it away. I mean, whatever, throw it. Like depending on how good it is, like you, like we just put it into like just bring your big bags down to March, whatever, and or to we bring it to Queens and Ace and just sell to them. It goes for a couple of euro a kilo. Oh yeah, not bad. But I always feel bad when it's like a roast and hot day. I remember we were in Mayo last summer. It was like thirty degrees, and there's just a load of sheep packed into a tiny piece of shade. They were all trying to get under mm-hmm. one tree, and they're so hot, and just. Like I was hot in a t-shirt, but I couldn't imagine having a massive woolly jacket on. Like, like they'll be they'll be doing that anyway, even if it's even if they were showing, they'd be in on that just to get out of just yeah. get some more comfort. Like they're like they're bred to 
Like they've, they've evolved to have that on the whole time. Like but, so, but I never understood because you have to cheer them, right? It, like rest just fall off. It will just fall off. It, like they'll shed it yeah. eventually. But again, the selective breeding, like they probably have been bred throughout the years to not shed it as yeah. much, so people can get the collect the wool. Yeah, I thought I saw the odd photo of a sheep who never, like you know, was neglected forever and he's just really fluffy. No, but like you see, then like you know, the west of Ireland or like southwest, like those sheep that kind of some of them don't get sheared, and you'll see just like sheep's wool everywhere because it just catches on things, yeah. and then it'll just get pulled off as well. So. Mm. And shock as well can affect them. We had one that got she got stuck in a drain there a couple of weeks ago, um, but her wool's all patchy now because like they get they get shock like the same as beautiful and it starts to fall off and comes wherever so stressful yeah. job go bald yeah, yeah. get to come over. That Elon Musk company was Neuralink by the way. Neuralink, Neuralink yeah. there. They also had an announcement like recently saying stuff would be coming soon, but classic I think he, he said that when he was on Joe Rogan like a year ago yeah and like he said that about lots of things yeah so yeah, like how's, how's, that, how's that tunnel going yeah in? that w- tunnel that works for one car at a time <laughs> yeah. he's announced an old um, SUV Tesla SUV concept so yeah that's, that'll get the Americans a bit more on the band I think they love their old SUVs we seem to bring them up way too often on this podcast <laughs> yeah it's only because Neuralink and the tunnel thing, like they're in space there's a lot they're of pushing boundaries yeah <laughs> and a lot of different directions be right we won't name him by name anymore Joe <laughs> let's quickly just talk about music you play some instruments and I have to say I was grossly neg- uh, negligent negligent um, um, that's not the word I'm looking for um, underestimate yes I didn't think Irish music was good oh until people both feel offended by that yeah why yeah why <laughs> I just didn't think it was like good. trad music yeah that's but right. it, only because I wasn't exposed to it I didn't know like I never really heard it you know you, I just didn't see it you never go down to like Galway or Mayo and go to a session no, no but it or go to a session here in Dublin yeah, well, so it's like it was kind yeah, of when that we... That could be the plan for later on. Just go out to Ryan's or Cobblestone's later on. Yeah. Well, if the weather is nice, yeah. But if the... Um... <laughs> we'll just sit inside and listen to the music. <laughs> if the weather's nice, we won't. <laughs> it's currently not as windy or rainy, but... Yeah. It changes every few seconds to look out the window. But when we did our Masters together in Space Science... Um, <laughs> All three of us. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's kind of when I was like, hey, wait a minute, this is good. And then you play a little raft of instruments. And then I was down at your music festival that you helped organise... Um, which actually is probably worth a shout out yeah 20th 21st 22nd of September this year Music Under the Mountains Music Under the Mountains yeah and it's in Hollywood in Hollywood in County Wicklow and actually have a couple of big names this year at it got Andy Irvine Mm. super yeah and first Lifetime Achievement Award for the RTE Folk Music Awards last year which is pretty cool was that that actually and Eleanor McAvoy as well. It's like, you know, a woman's heart. She's actually going to be down. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So, so book the date, people. people. Yes. Yeah. I think of kind of fusion of poetry and music on Friday night. Jane Clark, Cormac Bratnock and Eamon Sweeney. So it'll be good. It'll be pretty cool. cool. Yeah. So Sounds it's good. It's a trad Irish music festival, but and also it's, it's quite broad in the stuff that's on because there's also lessons uh, or... Last year, I saw you attending a talk at some point. Yeah, so like we did, we did, we did yeah. a talk again this year with Eleanor, but we did a talk last year with um, Paddy Glacken. Like an interview or like... Yeah, it was um, an interview. So we had him being interviewed by, oh God, I can't remember who was. Somebody. He's <laughs> really person. bad. He's a really, yeah, he's a really good piper as well. That's what <laughs> his name. But it was pretty, like, he's a broad, the two like a broadcaster. Uh, Sean Mooney. Yeah. Well, it, was really, it was really good yeah, that was, we hadn't done that before so that was pretty cool but like, we do yeah. the workshops and lessons yeah. due, we did lessons during the year and the festival is to basically fund the lessons like to keep it to keep it going keep like, going yeah. yeah so you teach those lessons every week yeah I teach accordion every week yeah. so what, what are your main instruments that you play mainly the accordion um, I used to kind of play the fiddle and whistle a bit but like it wouldn't even bother yeah. picking them up now I wouldn't be able to but like yeah. trying to teach myself concertina as well so. you know your way around concertina <laughs> Yeah. And what do you play, Dilda? Oh, a variety of things. <laughs> bit of piano. Bit of piano. Is that a concertini? A, a uh, concertini. Ukulele up there, I see. There's a ukulele in our, in our in our studio well. here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's a guitar in the corner of the studio, so. Yeah. Lots of things. Ah, yeah. it's all a bit of crack. And uh, we recently moved into the electronic mu- music uh, <laughs> scene <laughs> where we were trying to make some beats. Uh, some sick beats. My brother's actually mad at that as well. So oh, that's, yeah. That, with that's your synth. Hard. Yeah. He's got, like, he's got loads of synths. Takes a lot of time, a lot of dedication to it learn all that stuff. Yeah, it doesn't feel 
uh, it's such a different kind of skill, isn't it? To yeah. trying to learn because it's not dexterity it comes down to it's actual knowledge, um, software, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and 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 also Sound knowing engineer. what you want to make. Yeah, it's tough, but it's cool. There's some like if you go on SoundCloud, there's some great like tunes on there from people that you just never hear of. Yeah, know, making yeah. it themselves. Rewarding. Yeah. That was the thing as well during the week, wasn't it? That um, my, they deleted a load of content from residual content from MySpace, and a lot of it was original artist music and stuff. Oh, really? and, yeah, like, and they were saying is because that was the only place that, that was actually archived. That it was a serious cultural loss. Oh, that's mad. Mental. Yeah. I was I was I was too late for MySpace. So I was never on it. Yeah, but it was a big music. Yeah, it was a big music place, and it was the Internet Archive people there's some place that archives internet stuff and they were like no wait before deleting it so we can um archive it, it but they didn't but and uh, a lot of there's lot, been a lot of facebook stuff as well that was deleted yeah um that wasn't backed up anywhere and it's mad to think something actually was on the internet loads of stuff and yeah. it actually just isn't anywhere now so yeah like, remember they did it with bebo when bebo closed down and they yeah which we launched her, but they were like they sent emails i'd be like if you want to, you can download all your stuff now, yeah. but do it before this day. So I'm mm-hmm. getting on with photographs of Bebo. And yeah, it's mad because like, people yeah. just aren't like bothered storing everybody's crap. Like. Yeah. Because that's what, like, people just upload everything, especially but, now. But even without being asked. I mean, like, most people don't even know all of the stuff that is uploaded. Like, yeah. you know, it's more that uh, it's in your phone's interest to just put it all in the cloud. But I guess once the cost of storage is like getting cheaper you know mm. so then and that run runs Good away thing all of our podcast recordings aren't on my space <laughs> yeah exactly yeah hope spotify, spotify doesn't, go, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't go under all right uh will we wrap it up there lads yeah um all right this, thanks for listening whoever's still here thanks joe for coming on thanks, for thanks to joe um everyone Thank don't you. pick dandelions that'd be one tip keep sugar in your pocket for bees yeah throw it at them throw it at them when Pop you see them, them. Yeah. yeah yeah. try and kill them if life <laughs> yeah uh, also like so, give us a follow on Twitter follow on Twitter uh, Instagram Joe on Twitter as well you can follow Ockham's Laser you can go to Music Under the Mountains we'll see it there and that's everything okay bye bye people <laughs>